process is the punishment. These are the terms we've been repeatedly hearing when we refer to acts such as the UAPA, which is the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, or when it came to the sedition law in India. Now we know from ministry data over the years that how these acts are being used to criminalize dissent in the country. Today, we're having a conversation about the recent data in terms of the use or the misuse of the UAPA law and many other laws and government agencies to crush dissent in our country and what it means for India's democracy. From the latest data, which was revealed to the country in the Rajya Sabha recently, we know that 97% of the people who are being tried under the UAPA Act, their trial has not even begun yet. This is the ministry data pertaining to the years 2016 to 2020, and it recently came into light in a parliamentary question in the Rajya Sabha. In a written reply to a question by CPIM MP A. a. Rahim in the Rajya Sabha, Union Minister for State Nityanand Rai revealed that at a total of 5,027 cases have been registered in which about 24,000 people have been accused under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. And it has been registered in various parts of the country between 2016 to 2020. According to the Home Ministry, just 212 people out of the 24,000 were convicted, while 386 people who were accused under the UAPA have been acquitted. So these are striking figures. And in our conversation today, in this video, we will be joined by a very special guest, senior advocate Mihir Desai, who has been handling these cases for the past several years and has been understanding the act, following the act for over a decade. He will be discussing with us the kind of consequences that the use of such acts have for our democracy. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. So my first question to you is, we now know that there is, uh, over the years, again and again, there is data to show how UAPA has been used as an instrument to uh, sort of punish those who are being uh, tried under the Act. And Abhi, there is this latest data, which is again going on to prove that. So how do we look at it in terms of over the years, there has been this pattern. So how do we understand it now in 2022? I personally feel that if you look at it over the last uh, uh, 20 years, because UAPA in its amended form came in 2003 uh, when the terrorist-related crimes were added to UAPA and the stringent bail provisions and the charge sheet provisions, uh, which allows them extension of time for filing a charge sheet, came in 2008. So you had a history of 14 years at least okay? uh, since the time UAPA was amended to bring in the draconian provisions. Uh, and if you see over the last 14 years, you have had a large number of cases okay, where uh, pe people have been charged under UAPA without there being any offense having been committed in the sense that uh, take, for instance, Bima Koregao cases. Okay, uh, Bima Koregao cases, there is no real offense in the sense that there is nothing. There, there is no bomb blast, there is no recovery of arms, there is no recovery of money, nothing of the kind. Okay? It's a general case okay? based on a conspiracy which keeps on enlarging itself. The scope keeps on enlarging itself. So you have a situation where, where in the, uh, a large number of people are being arrested okay, under UAPA. And this is happening increasingly so. Okay? Uh, and you saw what happened recently, that uh, 121 people were released uh, on being acquitted. But after five years of jail, so the problem with UAPA, one of the major problems, apart from various other problems, is that UAPA is being used in order to keep people behind bars for a large number of years without a trial actually starting, commencing or, 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 or concluding. You know? So people are kept behind bars for large number. And that's, uh, that's what we call process being a punishment. Okay? That is what is happening under UAPA. There are a large number of people, 121 tribals charged with something which nobody was able to prove. 
At the end of the day, they are released. Yes, but they they have lost their entire lives. Five years is a huge. Uh, I, I mean, uh, is a very very prolonged time for people to be behind bars without uh, without getting bail, without getting convicted. Yes, and uh, do you see that there is an increasing use of this, especially? in the light of the fact that uh, you know supreme court made a big judgment it was hailed as historic in terms of sedition so after that uh, how do you look at uap now in terms of uh, the sedition judgment also see the sedition uh, judgment of course there is no final judgment but there is an interim order which is passed by the supreme court which is a very very good order okay uh, because one of the complaints was a sedition was being used very very uh, rampantly all over the uh, all over the country okay, in order to uh, put people behind bars now with uap uh, with sedition going out of the picture at least for the time being till uh, till they decide one way or the other it is for the time being going out of the picture yeah. they are using much more uapa as well as 153a okay uh, whether it's for a tweet whether it's for some kind of a, a, a you know fact checking or for anything you know. so you and, while sedition has been done away with for the time being okay, i think it is it is uh, uh, now the same uh, same powers are being exercised through uapa and exercised much more stringently by nia which is a central agency okay national investigating agency which of course law came in 2008 but it has become very very active in the recent times okay and acts essentially as a arm of the home ministry to pick up anybody whom they want to pick up anybody uh, uh, any any dissenters uh, all kinds of dissenters are being picked up under this uh, the uh, uap and that uh, it, it's a very 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 sorry state of affairs which is happening right now yeah and in terms of the other uh, kind of uh, role nia has played the kind of powers it has been given if you can talk to us about that see uh, ordinarily law and order is a state subject so only the state government can arrest people extra charge people the only exception to that was cbi but cbi investigation could take place only if the state government consented to handing over a, a particular investigation to cbi okay yeah. so it depended again on the state government's consent nia is one act where the central government can directly uh, go uh, uh, ask nia to investigate an offense Okay, without any any reference to the state government, without consent of the state government, so that's one thing. That it's a central uh, prosecuting agency, okay, which has for the first time been brought into existence. Okay, for ordinary crimes, etc. I mean, of course, there is a schedule that only certain kind of crimes can be uh, uh, investigated by NIA. But what happens therefore is that, irrespective of who the state government is, whether the state government is willing to go uh, go against a particular person or not. Okay. the law and order which is otherwise a state subject is being taken over is being centralized okay by central government taking it over okay, and using the nia as uh, to, uh, to weaponize the uh, weaponize various offenses and this is happening across the country not just i mean i've seen it in maharashtra you see it in delhi you see it in various other places okay especially where the state government is not the same as that of the central government Okay, when the, especially there, it is happening very, very rapidly. Yeah. And uh, one more very important question. So, when we see agencies being used like this, when we see uh, the use of an act such as UAPA, which is having large scale implications, so if we have to understand politically the kind of implications that it has for our democracy, for our futures, uh, be it for journalists or for ordinary citizens, where do we stand? i think it's a very uh, we are at a very very uh, 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 dangerous situation uh, as far as the entire country is concerned because you see not just the uapa you see the pmla being weaponized i don't know today the pmla judgment is going to come i don't know what the judgment would say the constitutional validity but you see the pmla being weaponized you see the uapa being weaponized you see 153a being weaponized You see, so you have a situation where any kind of dissent, any disagreement, any criticism, okay, which is part of your fundamental and which is part of any democracy, the you know, fundamental right to uh, speech and expression, whether it's for journalists, whether ordinary people, okay, everybody is fearing. Uh, everybody is fearing, uh, and there is a chilling effect. So it's not just a question of people who are arrested. Uh, Azmir might be arrested. 
but what happens is that it has a chilling effect on a large number of other people okay who may not be arrested but who will just decide to keep quiet because they fear for their uh, for being arrested for uh, for being put behind bars you know? and that is something very very dangerous for a democracy yeah and my last question to you sir how do we see this going forward in terms of the legal committee uh, 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 community as well we saw that there was a big movement uh, there was a lot of pressure in terms of um, the sedition act and there was there were protests against the act there was so much that had happened so do you see that there there could be um, is there anything developing to sort of uh, target or to specifically raise a voice against these problematic sections of the uapa act uh, i there is there is there are campaigns going on uh, for uh, for uh, a abolishing or b at least diluting the provisions of uh, uh, uapa Okay. Because remember one thing that under quota, which was the uh, precursor to UAP, okay, the stringent conditions of bail applied only for the first first year of arrest. After that, you would be governed by the normal bail conditions and you would get bail. UAP, the stringent conditions of bail applied till the end of your trial. Okay, now that and, and that is something, and and therefore a lot of voices are uh, uh, voices are there, not only from some of the opposition parties but also from the civil society. Yeah. where uh, uh, people are opposing uapa but let's see whether this uh, whether whether this this uh, uh, opposition this campaigns how much effect it has because that's one thing which we will have to see also one will have to see how the supreme court deals with the issue because supreme court itself in judgments like watali and all okay, have made the uapa even more stringent than it is so one has to see how the judiciary also responds up till now the response of the judiciary especially in uapa has not been very good let me put it that way and if there is there needs to be one big takeaway from this in one line uh, to just end our conversation what would that be sir well uh, the, the point is that uh, i feel that uh, weaponization of draconian laws can be stopped only by doing away with draconian laws for instance if uapa okay which attacks say, terrorist activities etc etc those same activities can be stopped under the ordinary criminal law whether it's uh, whether it's the indian penal code or some of the other laws okay and there is no need for any special act because these special act always get misused and that's the history of these special acts and therefore doing away with these special acts is the only way out that's how i look at it Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. To receive instant updates on all videos from the wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.